Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm looking at my phone. No way, dude, no way. <laughs> Somebody just asked me to go somewhere. And <laughs> dude, no way. It's unclear, ask again. Isn't this pen funny? It's a song right now. I just want to throw my phone away. Find out who really cares for me. You can keep everything. You can keep the diamond ring. You can keep everything. I like this. This is, I like the one line. This is the part of me. I wish I could, I wish I could freaking remember the name of the songs. I know lyrics, but I don't know the songs. This is the part that I like. So days like this, I want to drive away, pack my bags and watch your shadow fade. You chewed me up and spit me out like I was poison in your mouth. You took my light, you drained me down, but that was then and this is now. Now look at me. <laughs> this is the part of me you're never going to take away from me. This is the part of me you're never going to take away from me. Throw your sticks and your stones and throw your bombs and your blows, but you're never going to break my soul. This is the part of me that you're never going to take away from me. I just want to throw my phone away and find out who's really there for me. You ripped me off. Your love was cheap. Was always tearing at the seams. I fell deep, you let me down. But that was then and this is now. Now look at me. <laughs> this is the part of me you're never going to take away. I love it. Now look at me, I'm sparkling, a firework, a dancing flame. So you won't ever put me out again. I'm glowing. Whoa. So you can keep the diamond ring? It don't mean nothing anyway. In fact, you can keep everything except for me. <laughs> freedom! Freedom! <laughs> Love it. Freedom! Was that Aretha Franklin's song? Blessings to her on her way into the light. Right? All right, so I did a reading for myself today, like I said I was gonna, and get myself ready. And then I did a reading for us. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I was looking for a crystal for us, and I took so long looking for it that I annoyed myself and I ignored Liger and ignored and, and annoyed. And I thought, I don't know if I'm gonna put it up. I also did something else. Um, freedom! Maybe this is her, I'm looking at the lyrics. Uh, there was a, a number that we got from Spirit, 5353. 53. We got it twice, right? And I said, oh, now this is for everybody who feels like they're not smart enough, smart as their brother or their friend, or they feel stupid because they've made really stupid mistakes that, or they haven't been able to clue into something that anybody else in the entire world would have figured out, right? This is me. I'm going to tell you what I did. <laughs> and I'm doing it this way because I want you to understand and hear me say this instead of sending it out and just having you guys all think, oh my God, she's completely retarded. And I'm saying that word, and I know that's an offensive word. People say, don't say that word. Say mentally challenged. No, I'm not talking about mentally challenged people. I'm talking about me. Uh, so this is what I did. 53, 53, right? I've already said to you guys a gazillion times, mouth is not my forte. It never has been. I've, I was always a voracious reader, right? So English was my thing. Math, no. And I don't do well at things I don't like and I'm not good at. When I was in math, uh, when I was in math, when I was in grade nine, you know, you had to have certain math courses and you had to have a Spanish class, right? Both my math teacher and my Spanish teacher said, I would advise that you don't take this course again if, you don't, if you're not going into a higher college because it doesn't compute with your mind. <laughs> and I agreed. Math goes in my head and it gets stuck in there. And it doesn't matter. My father was a wizard. He was faster than a computer. My son, brilliant. I, don't, I think my daughter's pretty bad. My mom was pretty bad too. So genetically, math is not my forte. Um, you're speaking to a high school dropout. I, I was gone for three months. Remember I told you I ran away when I was 17? Well, that was during school. So I was gone for three months. And when I came back, um, all the other teachers are like, no worries, you can make it up. They all loved me, right? But this new guy, he was this civics teacher and he hated me and I didn't like him either. And he said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to allow you to make up the course. You'll have to come back at the end of the year and, and start again next year. And I'm like, what? Like, I wasn't gonna graduate. And I said, do you mean, you're telling me that I have to come back next year and do these three classes before I can graduate? So I can't walk with my class? And he said, yeah, that's what you get for not being here. And I'm like, wow, you had no idea what was going on in my family, right? You had no idea why I took off. 
So my dad knew because he was <laughs> the reason I took off said, you know what, forget it. There's no point in going through 11th grade, I mean, through 12th grade and not even being able to graduate. So he pulled me out and I went to cosmetology school. So I only went to grade 11 in high school. So I'm a high school dropout. I can't do math. I can't speak Spanish except for the street Spanish that my friends spoke. And uh, I am, I went to cosmetology school afterwards. So I'm a licensed cosmetologist, you know, a beauty school dropout except for it was high school dropout and uh, I'm a Reiki master a licensed Reiki master and I hold a dream analysis certificate as well and I'm a shaman and I'm a spiritual teacher that runs my own business so here you go here's an example of you don't need to be a college or higher graduate university you don't have to hold a degree you don't have to be hell my dad went to what did he my dad went to school in, in, until sixth grade in Germany that's what they did and then he went to an apprenticeship program to be a carpet weaver that's his trade and at 18 he left Germany and moved to California on his own couldn't even speak the language the man is a multi gazillionaire right now <laughs> and and he is the inventor of the hydraulic lifter and the Volkswagen engines invented the fifth gear all kinds of other stuff that I don't even know about and don't understand because it has to do with cars Suffice it to say, when you think that you can't do something, yes, you can. You follow your passion and you go after what you love and you will excel at it. I excel at what I do, at what I love, right? I'm good at what I love. So this is, now I'm going to tell you what I did. You're going to laugh. So 5353, I can't add. I'm telling you. Not only did I already have a problem with math, but I had a, a very severe car accident. I spoke to you guys about it. Um in my 30s and was it my 30s early 20s I guess and I had a severe whiplash and I got a brainstem injury and it literally affected my mathematical skills and I was like oh my god you've got to be kidding it was already hor horrendous right but it's it's the truth it goes in and it gets stuck in there <laughs> I can't figure it out you could sit there patiently with me forever and it doesn't compute. Sometimes it'll work and sometimes it doesn't. It's literally a fact. I went to all kinds of uh, physical therapy afterwards and all, nothing. So 5353, like I go to lunch with my best friend, Julie, and I'm like, what's the tip? You, can you add it up for me and just do it? Cause I can't figure it out. And she's just like, Dick -dick. so um, I've made mistakes with my work. I've given people readings and free Reiki sessions because I totaled things up not like I looked at it and I thought, oh, she paid for this and paid for that. Realizing, no, I, I didn't get paid for a reading and a Reiki session. I got paid for a reading and a tip or a, a Reiki healing and a tip. <laughs> but I looked at it and I thought it was the two things. Oh my God. So this is me having to slow down and, and be careful, right? I'm telling you all this because there are people out there who think they can't do something. They are limited in some way. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I did. 53 and 53. So what do I do? I add 3 and 3. That's 6, right? And then I look at the two fives and I think 10. So I go, that's 16, right? I literally let it go. I knew it didn't sound right, but I let it go. And I said, okay, so that's 16, right? And I let it go. I, and I thought, okay, I'm going to redo this reading. Not because I don't want you to know that because I'm going to tell you. But I'm going to redo it because you're not going to hear all of this. And you need to hear this. Somebody needs to hear this. <laughs> And I don't care. You can laugh at me or with me. I'm laughing with you. I don't really care. Okay. So I'm going to try and do this. I literally have my phone lines open. So we might and most likely will get bumped off. I don't know. It's a very quiet day. We're working with four decks. And this, we're going to start. Uh, what are we working for? Working for. What are we working for? We're working for fun. We're working for fun. We're working for spirit. We're working for love. Okay, here's what we're going to pick from, guys. Uh, la, 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 la. The Iron Horse, the Golden Goddess. I call her the Golden Goddess. The Broken Goddess, who's figured out her self-worth. We'll just call her the Goddess. The Goddess, the Iron Horse. What did I use earlier? Uh, shoot. I had all kinds of cool reasons for what I used and why I used what I did. Um, why am I taking so long? The Man from the Mountain. We used the Man from the Mountain, and we used... Under the sea, okay? Under the sea is water. Mamphan Mountain is earth. The Iron Horse will be Aries. 
I'm Aries, fire signs, and the, no, the golden goddess will be fire signs, and this will be air. Okay. Water, earth, fire, air. <laughs> okay. We're going to start with water right now, because I'm going to forget that. Earth. Okay. Who am I? My grandma, there's air. Okay. Grandma's air. Well, grandma's air. That's a good one, because she's in spirit. We'll start with that. So the first deck we're going to work with is... The angels, gods, and goddesses. And right now, Spirit's showing you, and starting at 10 minutes and, what, 25 seconds? Angel of Guidance, a renewed sense of direction and purpose will soon manifest. So if you've been feeling like, oh man, that job fell through, or what I was planning on doing didn't work out, don't worry about it, Spirit's got your back. A renewed sense of direction and purpose is soon gonna manifest. You're gonna, maybe you have an idea floating around in your head, Maybe there's something there that they you know. A lot of times we've got stuff that's floating around and we don't even realize what we have. A lot of times we don't realize, like the reason I just told you what I did, that what we're supposed to be doing is just something we love, something that we would do for recreation, something that we would do for fun, something we're good at. So if you've been feeling lost or confused or not sure of which direction to take, take a hint from what I just told you and realize you can do anything you set your mind to. You can. I could learn math if I chose to. I just don't like it. So I need to tell myself that I will become better at math because it's necessary for my work, right? So basically, Spirit has heard what you've been worrying about. They have. They've heard you. Maybe you've been crying. I've been hearing crying. Somebody's been crying. Maybe it's been about your path. Maybe you don't know the direction you're meant to go. Maybe you don't know what you can do. So Spirit's telling you right now they want you to feel this energy moving in through you. They're going to send you a clarifying light right through the middle of your third eye. So close your eyes and imagine that star exploding right in your third eye and filling you with light. Feel expand all around your auric field. This is your auric field. It's like a vibrational frequency vibrating out from you. Feel that. Feel it, feel it, feel it. It's a healing as well. It's going to calm you. It's going to tell you to relax. It's okay. It's going to all expand. And then this star is going to burst into a rainbow of color. And imagine all of that rainbow color swirling all around you. All of the violet ray, all of the rainbow rays, all coming around you and within you. Now, close your eyes. Right through the center, you've got the star. That's your guiding light. Imagine emanating from that. It's shining a light in front of you, and that's the path that you're going to follow. That's the golden path. You can see whatever you want beyond uh, down that path what is it that you're drawn to are you drawn to the ocean to the beach to the forest to the meadows your perfect picture is in front of you you follow that path where do you go that's going to tell you something as well where do you go where are you drawn some people are drawn to the snow some people are drawn to farmland some people are drawn to the mountains hills the desert the ocean where are you going you all know where i'm going well, that, then at the end of that, you see the sun setting at the end of that path. So this is your journey in front of you. And that sun, light, shining down on that path, that is going to direct you. That's the light of your soul. So follow that. that follow that guiding light. Follow, that, follow your true north. Your true north is where your heart will pull you, what you love, where you want to be, who you want to be with. Stop trying to figure it all out and recognize that you're being led where you're meant to go. This is a, a meditation, and you can do this every single day until you start seeing and feeling that renewed sense of direction in your life. But you will get an idea of where you're meant to go very soon, is what Spirit's telling you. So, bam, bam. Okay, so now we're going to go to the Messenger Oracle. Do not fear the unknown. You're afraid of it, don't be. Don't be afraid of it. Connect to the earth. She looks creepy, or he, it. Seven tells you you're on the right path and it will exceed your expectations. It's way better than you realize. It's always better than we think. Always better than we think. So this person seems to be crowded and crowded, <laughs> shrouded in mystery. Ooh. She looks creepy, but maybe she's not. Maybe it's just something you don't understand. Why do they have acorns and feathers? Well, I look at that and I think, ooh, this person knows the acorn man, right? 
this person is a shaman, they're connected, they understand the elements of air and the elements of the earth. They're connecting deeply. Look at those antlers. There's something very mysteriously fantastic about this. It's interesting. It's weird to have it coming out of her forehead though, right? That's kind of trippy. So that would probably scare you. If you saw somebody walk up with those sticking out of their head, you'd be like, okay, I probably don't want to go there. And there's like weird shit going on in there. Somebody burning sage and all kinds of weird stuff that I don't understand, right? So spirit's asking you not to be afraid of what you think is ugly. Because sometimes, you know what? Ugly isn't, and bad isn't always bad. And beautiful is definitely not always good. Sometimes something is presented in the most beautiful fashion and it's coming from a very ugly place. A beautiful person can have a very cold heart, an ugly soul, be manipulative, jealous, vengeful, bitter, soulless. And a person that you would overlook, the most loving, generous kind of heart. And yet the same thing, someone really freaking scary could be somebody very, very beautiful, very wonderful, very loving. So never judge a book by its cover. And recognize that as far as fearing the unknown, don't go in there predetermined that you're going to lose, that you're not going to succeed. Go in there understanding that you can do anything you set your mind to. And even if somebody else laughs at you and thinks what you're doing is freaky and weird and, oh, yeah, my mom, she's a freaking, yeah, she's like sages and she does these like moon ceremonies and she talks to animals and angels and she needs psychiatric help, right? That's somebody who doesn't understand and they're gonna be, they're gonna think you're weird and they're gonna wanna pull away from you. We have to understand that as well. But don't let that stop you. As I say that, Lily cries at the window. Hmm, do you represent somebody who thinks that this is creepy and weird and you don't understand it? And they may think that they have the right path and they may think that, you know, we're a nut, but that's okay. <laughs> you're entitled to your own opinion, right? I'm okay. Recognize that what people fear, they, they judge, and they fear what they don't understand. So don't allow yourself to do that. And also, if somebody has done something and it didn't go well for them, it doesn't mean it's not gonna go well for you. It may not have been for them. And somebody, you know, I've tried this, or I did this, or, you know what? My mom and dad had a disaster of a marriage. I've, I've watched nothing but a disaster with everyone around me. I will never get married. Why, are you so convinced that you, you're, you're gonna be bad at that? Is there something wrong with the way you are in life? Maybe they chose wrong. Maybe they didn't do things the correct way. It doesn't mean that you won't. Why don't you learn from those experiences? Don't let another person's experience be what guides you. And something somebody else could do could work out very well for them, but it's not your thing. It's not for you. So you could try and shove yourself into that mold and try and be that, and it's a disaster because it's not you. You need to be your authentic, true self. You need to not be afear, afraid of what you don't understand and what you don't know. You need to just be open and, and know that spirit's gonna guide you. And if it feels wrong for you, it feels wrong, don't do it, right? If it feels wrong, no, this is not just, this is like, doesn't right for me. That's a different si si situation. But don't become a prisoner of your fear. Because a lot of times what we are afraid of, it's not even really there. We've created something in our mind that isn't even real. And it holds us like a prisoner. Sometimes we're afraid of the way someone else is because of what other people have told us, but we haven't even looked into it for ourselves. So if you're not allowing yourself to experience things because other people think it's not a good idea, you're missing out on a lot in life. You could be experiencing some really wonderful things and things could be very rewarding for you. So I think we got a message about this earlier about if you're not quite certain about something, just kind of wait and see or maybe look into it a little bit. Are you gonna at first look at it and judge it and say, nope, not for me, done? Or are you gonna look a little further and see, is this actually something that I should fear? Or is this something that I just maybe don't understand? I don't know, we got through the first one. 19 minutes and 36 seconds, we go to the man on the mountain, earth signs. We're gonna do another one from the angels, gods, and goddesses. Oh, wow. Hold on. I dropped the whole deck, which means I need to shuffle. My hands were like butter. 
correct for neutrality on all levels. Ooh, it was an afterthought. One fell, and then another fell on top. Ooh! So we're going to go for this one. Look at the colors. Liking this. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Those are ocean beautiful soul colors to me. See the colors of the sea, the mermaid, the angel. Colors of truth. She looks like she's coming up out of her emotional waters. Beautiful. Angel of communication. Communicate clearly and don't be afraid to tell it like it is. This came up this morning in our reading, the reading that I did. Came up yesterday too, didn't it? That somebody's afraid to speak up and so they're not? Don't be. Right now, Spirit's telling you that this is a lesson that you've needed to learn in this lifetime is, is to be able to speak it and tell it the way it is. Speak your truth. You may have been somebody who, when you spoke as a child, were told to be quiet. Or if you spoke, maybe you stuttered and you were embarrassed. Or maybe nobody really wanted anything to hear about anything what you had to say. But right now, Spirit's saying, we want you to speak up. Don't assume people know what you need or how you feel because right now, Spirit's saying, they don't. They don't. And because of your failure to communicate honestly, honestly and clearly, people are confused and they have to guesstimate. And if you guesstimate or have to assume something, they're generally going to make a mess of that, which is probably going to make you mad. But whose fault is that? Yours. Don't be afraid to say it the way it is. They don't know what to expect. They don't know because they don't know the truth. They could, they could assume something, but what if they're wrong, right? You certainly can't lose anything by trying, so speak up. There's, there's no need for you to blame or accuse anybody of anything. You just need to speak your truth, like, hey, this is the way it is, or this is how I feel, or this is what I want. Just state your case clearly, authentically, truthfully. This is the color of truth. You're probably concerned that they're not going to want to hear what you have to say. Maybe you're not going to be accepted about what, how you feel. Or maybe you want their approval and you don't think that they will give you approval. Think about the, way, the story I told at the beginning of this. You know, don't be afraid to speak up. Love yourself. And you know what? You're loving someone else by doing that because otherwise you're leaving everybody in a state of confusion and unhappiness. So right now, if you can communicate clearly, honestly, and lovingly, that's great. If you have a difficult time with this, ask Spirit to help you. Because this is exactly what Spirit is saying. The angel of communication is here to help you address what you need to say and, and will help you be understood. So you can go with the intention. My intention is that I'm understood. My intention is that I get my point across in a way. We've had this message, you guys, in a pleasing way. In a way, we got this for the beginning of the week, for our weekly reading. Be careful. Maybe, you know, don't, you don't need to use a lot of words. Just ask that the right words be chosen. And it's best to do it in person. You can make arrangements to meet up, but it's best to speak your truth in person. Because emails and text messages can be misunderstood because of the, you don't hear the tone of voice and you don't see the expression. Sometimes people will say something and they're completely misunderstood because they're, they don't have the best way of expressing themselves. Let's find out if Spirit has a special message. <laughs> Dude, no way. <laughs> Dude, no way. No, it's not what you thought. Dude, no way. Really? Not for a million dollars. That wouldn't have happened. Dude, no way. <laughs> you may have misunderstood something. Ah, message. All right, next message. We'll go to the, what is this? I'm going to switch decks. The universal love. This is my first universal love deck. So 24 minutes. Oh no, we're on the same, we're on the same guy, aren't we? Creativity. Ooh. Coming out of your emotional waters. Okay, this is a cool card. I'm looking at that angel. She's got a genie bottle in her hand. Or is it a is it the ooh, is it is this the grail fairy holding the grail? The cup holding the golden chalice? And look. Who's jumping? She's looking at that fish. Look at all the fish in the sea, but she's only looking at that one, and that one wants to come in to that cup. Are you, or is she offering that cup to that fish? Ooh, liking that. Whatever the case is, 
There's a lot of sacral chakra energy happening here. The seat of sexual energy and creativity all around. She's standing in her emotional waters and she's got fish swimming all around her. Fish represent abundance. Goldfish always represent money. Interesting. Look at the rain. It's monsoon season like it is right now. It's right now because there's blue sky and there's clouds in the sky with rain pouring down. Monsoon. Lots of emotion. So lots of emotion surrounding this creativity. Interesting. Well, like we just said, you definitely want to do something that you love, right? You're going to be good at what you love. And there's stirring energy within you. Something swirling in that emotional water. So tap in and find out what is it your soul is trying to express. Are you trying to express yourself in a creative way? You could do that. Like, you know, the person that you just were supposed to speak up. I don't know how to do it. Write a song, draw a picture, send pictures, do something creative to express yourself. How could you express yourself to somebody? Think of different ways that you could show somebody how you feel. That, that's homework for you. Explore it. What is, you, what is it that you love? We're going to go back to the creativity and what you should be doing or going after. Are you an artist? Are you a gardener? Are you a sculptor? Are you a musician? What do you like to do? There's so many different ways that we can creatively express ourselves. Everybody has their own way of doing it. And, and, and it doesn't have to be done in a way that others think is super cool. Like, I've got to tell you, some of the most expensive artwork is stuff that I look at and I'm like, are you kidding me? I wouldn't a million dollars buy that. If you gave me that, I wouldn't put that in my room. That's disgusting, right? I painted that. I thought, I'm not an artist. And I painted it. You know what? Look at the size of the trunk compared to the, to the tree fur, the firs. And look at, everything's out of, out of um, scale. But then maybe those trees are in the distance. You know, I look at that and I freaking love it. I love it. I'm not an artist, but I like that. It's, look at this thing. Okay, I gotta show you this. Look at her face. Isn't that an ugly face? I'm sorry, I just think that's an ugly face. That's supposed to be a woman. I just find that ugly. I do. And then you look at, you know, look at all the different types of, of art, all the different things that people make. People make just a dried bunch of flowers. People buy that, right? My avian crystal clusters, I mean my avian crystal cones, my meditation stones. All of these are charged with, with Reiki. All of these are the messengers that, that have brought me, they've gifted me with these. Red hawks, all the different birds that are on here. And the cone, some people look at that and go, what the hell? Somebody made a joke about that. They're like, okay, that's kind of freaky. Well, actually, that's very valuable. The energy coming from those stones and the Reiki charged and all the meanings of those particular stones, if I look at each one of those, I could take this in, in meditation and just focus on one section and know what those meanings are and, and, and emulate the power and, and um, emulate, emulate, emulate. The wisdom that comes from these particular stones and what they stand for and what it means for me I could focus on a feather right there's a lot going on here but somebody else might look at that and think what the hell Ooh, I like it that way I'm gonna turn it that way the blue jay right so there's artwork that's art it is I'm looking around to see what else there's just all kinds of stuff you know I piled all of these crystals in here the other day when we did the reading that's art what is it for you other people don't have to like it. It just has to be something that works for you. And it's unique and it's fun. And it's fun figuring it out. So that's for you. And at 28 minutes and 58 seconds, I'm laughing about my mathematical skills. Oh my God, that was so funny. We're gonna go to, bye man from the mountain. We're gonna go to, who else did I use? I used the C. I used the mountain. I lost who I had in front of us. I had the goddess. <laughs> oh. One, two. Oh, we had the iron horse. We had this. Oh, so that's it. We're back. We're down to the end. <laughs> We're down to the goddess at 29 minutes. Okay. I'm looking around desperately for everything else. Okay. Goddess energy. We have goddess of sacred power. Wow. You are being encouraged to take a leading role in your situation, in your current situation. Get out from behind that charade, from that curtain, and speak up or step up. 
what is it that's going on in your life right now? Whatever it is, it requires hands-on for you. Hands-on, hands-in. This is not about delegating authority to anyone else. This is about you stepping into it. Goddess of sacred power. So first of all, the solar plexus, again, you can do anything you set your mind to. You're wrapped in truth, the first thing. You've got spirituality all around you. And you're holding a yellow rose, yellow rose of friendship. Do you need to reach out to a friend? If so, you're the one that needs to reach out. You're being asked to, to it might be a family situation. Okay, so if, did I choose this? Can't remember what I chose. If I did, it's about my family and I did take a leading role. I already reached out just now. So if you maybe have a situation within your family or with someone else, a project or a friend, right now it needs to be, somebody needs to lead. <laughs> somebody needs to take the lead and it doesn't matter. You know, sometimes being uh, democratic or you know doing it the right way doesn't work. It doesn't. Sometimes you just have to get in there. Everybody's gonna have their own opinion. Everybody's gonna have their own idea of how things should be done. But right now, apparently nobody's doing anything. So somebody has to do something. So it's kind of like you're both in the canoe and you both have an oar and neither one of you is using the oar and you're starting to go over the fire. Oop, go over the waterfall. Yes. Can we help you, Miss Bossy Pants? She lets herself be known, right? What she wants. So spirit saying, allow your, allow your needs to be known. What is it that you want? You're gonna get action if you speak up. So take, now she's complaining that she's outside. I'm about to throw her in the other room. So right now spirit wants you to have the courage because right now you're hiding. You're hiding behind something, but you wanna do it. So, and you want something to happen. So ask spirit to help you take control of the situation. Help me. Show me what I'm meant to do and how I can do it. Guide me. And then allow spirit to bring that through you. You'll understand what they're asking you to do. Listen to your intuition. See what pops up. You might get other messages through other means that will show you how you're meant to do this. Ooh, look at me breezing through this. This is awesome. Um, what should we do? Should we do... Okay, I just heard the messenger oracle. Okay, we'll go back to the messenger oracle. Here, I'm going to shuffle. I can't believe we're doing this whole entire reading without getting bumped. Correct for neutrality on all levels. Final message, most important. Ah, oh, that was an afterthought. Okay, this is weird. I got this one when I did my reading this morning. So emphasis on this, and I wondered what it was because it was very simple, I felt. But maybe that's all it is. Sometimes spirit says less words are more powerful. Right? Keep it simple, stupid. Eight, the number of infinity you will be infinitely supplied. Embrace spirit. So you're trying to figure out which way to go or how to do something, call upon spirit, call upon the eagle. This is freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of action, taking control of your life. Call upon spirit to direct you. Embrace the qualities of the eagle. If there's a storm going on in your life right now, the eagle flies above the storm. It uses the energy of the storm to propel it higher. It doesn't hunker down and hide out like most birds do. So, in the storm of your life or the chaos of your life, use that energy to propel you high. Go to spirit. Guide me, direct me. Make sure that you don't stay floating around in spirit and you're not grounded. You have to be both. You need to have eagle eye vision, meaning look at things from a higher perspective, but also stay connected to the earth below. We are spiritual beings, we are spiritual creatures, but we are human inhabiting these suits as well, these human suits. So we just have to remember that we are still connected to spirit. We are not simply human beings, we're not. So this, there isn't much to this, this message, but I feel as though Eagle has something to say to us because I got it this morning and I've been seeing the Eagle quite a bit a lot lately, quite a bit. So, freedom, the courage to look ahead. Do you know what an eagle will do? I don't know how often it happens, but they have to remove their beak. And they, it's a grueling process. This is about death, transformation, and rebirth. They will go and they will smash their beak on a rock until it, they break it off. And they have to stay up 
in a safe place until they grow that back. And it's painful what they go through. I don't know why that has to happen, but it does. So this is talking about our own spiritual growth. Like I said about me, I've had to smash my head through, <laughs> through a wall a million times before I've learned a lesson. But it's made me strong and it made me grow. And the beak that they grow, that will be the one that they have for the rest of their life. They live a very, very long time. I'm going to, hold on, eagle smashing beak. It's really awful, actually, when I watched it. Um, they call it the eagle's rebirth. So at 40 years old, they begin their transformation. So this is like the, the probably the premise of Middle Age Crazy. They take a life, make, they, this is a, a decision that they make, and they break off their beak, and they rip out their feathers. Oh, I didn't remember that part of it. So they, it's, it's, I mean, to see that, I've watched it, it's brutal. So, hold on. Ah. Okay, so they don't pluck their feathers off, but they, they molt their feathers. And they don't lose everything at the same time. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to fly, and that would be ridiculous. So, so they live for 30 years. So that's not true. So, so see now information. We needed to look up information. So this is good, actually. I'm glad I did this because we got this earlier. Remember something that seems scary? Something you, you've heard something or you've, somebody's told you something, you've believed something, and it's frightened you? So look into it yourself. Maybe it's not actually what, you believe, what, what you're being told. This is really good. This is really good. So there's not the truth. They don't do that at age 40. They only live 30 years. So that isn't the truth. Um, without their talons or their beak, they would die of starvation. The beak and talons are composed of hard keratin and sometimes similar to fingernails. They're not as flexible as the story claims. New layers grow with the keratin. They build on the old layers. They keep their, their beaks in good condition naturally by eating tough prey and rubbing their beaks on stone or other surfaces. They do not pluck out their feathers. So why would that have been told to us? I'm going to bring this back again. Okay, so this is what the myth was. They go through a process at, thir at 40 years old. They take a life-changing decision, and then that's when they break off their beak and they rip out, rip out their feathers, and they wait for them to grow back. They showed me. I watched this video about this. Isn't that interesting? So not everything you see is the truth, right? All, a lot of fake uh, profiles going out there, a lot of fake news articles. Um, what is that song by, um, what's that guy who was married to the Ghost Whisperer? Oh my God, this is making me laugh. He was a total player. Um, and, when they, and when they own, and when they own the news, they can bend it all they want. When they own when they own the truth, when they own the, what is it, what's his name? John Mayer, waiting on the world to change. Okay, John Mayer dated the Ghost Whisperer and he was a big time player, huge. Okay, and so, me and all my friends were all misunderstood. They say we stand for nothing and there's no way we ever could. Now we see everything's going wrong with the world and those who lead it. We feel like we don't have the means to rise above and beat it, so we keep on waiting, waiting on the world to change. We don't want to wait. We want to beat the system. We want to start working, right? It's hard to beat the system when we're standing at a distance, so we keep waiting, waiting on the world to change. Now, if we had the power to bring our neighbors home from war, they would never have missed a Christmas, no ribbons on their door. And when you trust your television, what you get is what you got, because when they own the information, they can bend it all they want. That's why we're waiting on the world to change. We're still waiting. One day, our generation is going to rule the population. Well, this is no more waiting. Because check that out, I heard that story and I believed it. And Spirit said, look into that, Sherry. And so I do, and we find it's a myth. I would have told somebody who would have told somebody else who would have told somebody else. Don't assume people understand what you need and what you, what you believe. 
Don't assume anything ever. If you want something to be understood, make sure that you tell them yourself. Don't believe information that you get from somebody else, especially when it's of importance. I'm doing a reading right now. I had to check on this, and I was wrong in what I said. Amazing. For almost half a decade, this story of the Eagles has gone on, and people have argued against it without having concrete proof. So here are a few proofs that we have collected, hoping they will help you decide for yourself. According to them, it all began a few, when a few motivational speakers came up with an idea to use the bald eagle's popularity of supremacy and transform it into something more. They created PowerPoint presentation slides, mainly for the objective of inspiring people in their lectures, since people tend to get motivated more from nature. However, not long after, these slides became viral over the internet. People started liking and sharing them, and it became a topic of widespread discussion. After all, the idea of shedding old feathers and growing new ones looked amazing. Below was one of the slides that became, okay, we watched that one. So then, then you had to bust this myth. This is myth, myth busters. So there's so many videos that go, go across our computers that are not true. It's spreading fear. We talked about this the other day. The media and there's this group that wants to kind of control the masses by spreading fear. You see horrible stories and things happening to people in other countries that in all actuality aren't happening. And then there are things that have happened that they denounce that are not happening. There was a woman who stood up. She was uh, from Nigeria, beautiful woman, stood up and she, and she said as she accepted her graduation diploma from, I can't remember what university she was in, that she was stunned when she found, came to the United States to find that everybody thought that, she, that Nigeria, they were a bunch of Africans starving and uh, uneducated. <laughs> she was like, what? The English is their main language. So many things people don't understand and so many people have not traveled in the world and they don't know. So there could be, right, as I'm saying right now, just because someone says they're a spiritual teacher doesn't mean they're coming from the light. Doesn't mean what they're telling you is the truth. If something doesn't seem realistic, check it out. Now, I believed what I was told, right? I watched the videos and I believed it. But now I have to look into this a little bit more. Someone who has studied on birds would tell you, it makes sense. How long can an animal live without any food? Without any feathers? I mean, come on. It doesn't make sense. So it's the same thing. If, even if I tell you something and it doesn't, it doesn't uh, work for your message, this is not your message, okay? This, this is just information, right? Say, say we were talking about, oh, you've been having a fearful um, time because you've been worried about expressing yourself. No, I haven't. And then you start wondering, well, the message is not for you. Sometimes the message is not for you. Maybe it's for someone else connected to you. Maybe you're supposed to pay attention to somebody in your life that has that issue. Maybe it isn't you. Sometimes the speaker will speak about things that they need to look into, like me. I needed to look into this and dispel this rumor. So now I know this is a rumor. This isn't the truth. Now, I've had issues in my life happen, horrible, horrible issues, because people have lied about me. And other people have believed what the other persons have said without looking into it themselves. Wow, that's really sucky. But look, think about it. I must have done that myself as well at times, right? So here's your, here's your message. If there is something that is bothering you and you're not quite sure what's going on, you best ask if there's an issue or ask, is this the truth? Because in all... For all intents and purposes, today we were just shown that this is completely not true. Right? That's huge. Freaking huge. I love that I saw that. I said, what does an eagle want to tell us? And I was going to talk about the eagle totem, but this was more important. And Spirit knew I needed to dispel that rumor because I believed that. I'm so glad that, see, you know, and I was stopped. I was going in one direction and then Spirit's like, no, go somewhere else. So the eagle, it's talking about courage and it's talking about freedom. It's talking about honesty and truthfulness. So all of that gets encapsulated in, in what just happened. I can truthfully now say, wow, you know what, that's not true and I'm not gonna say that to anyone else again. I actually have never repeated that in a reading until just now. Isn't that funny? I heard that, I watched that and I thought, wow, that's brutal. I can't imagine the pain, right? And what I was gonna say is our transformation can be painful at times, very painful. but. The eagle didn't have to go to that extent. And you know what? We don't have to go through that extent either. 
sometimes we make it harder on ourselves than we need to. So that's the message. Dang. Did we have another one before this? I can't even remember. If we did, I'm going to ask for one more message. If we already got two for this, this will be for everyone. If we didn't, this will be for this person. I just got sidetracked with that. Dang. That's pretty cool to know that. But there is a lot about truth and honesty and not assuming. Right? And having the courage to move forward with, the, with after our desires and our creativity and our intentions and in our approach. Angel of psychic ability. This is cool. Your psychic ability is very strong right now. You're tapping into things. I get this a lot for myself. Look at the rainbow light around her aura. After I get downloads before the you know the full moon, I just I get another level because I get all this stuff tapped in. And so it takes a couple days of, of rest, and uh, I have to digest everything. And that's what I've actually done when I took the weekend off and I I've rested, and it's allowed me to assimilate the downloads that spirit gave me. So right now, I am, I'm, I'm picking up on things. So you are as well. Right now your psychic ability is enhanced. Maybe you are also somebody who works very well after a full moon. So they want you to trust in what you're getting. Pay particular attention to how you feel. I always say how you feel and how you sense first before even what your thoughts are. Because we talk ourselves out of a lot of things that we think. That when your body has gets covered in chills, that's a message to you. What are you? Why? I'm hearing a song. My body's covered in chills. Is this for me? Is this for someone else? Why is my body reacting this way? If I got a flush of heat, I know for me heat is uncomfortable and negative. I have been hearing crying, cat crying. I've been hearing that something happened to someone that I am connected to, and it was a big deal. I heard crying. Someone crying out for attention. Somebody wanting attention. Somebody wanting to grab my attention. So you have to pay attention. When that crying was happening, what was I talking about? What song was on the radio? What was I thinking about? What was I feeling? Who was I thinking about? Pay attention to what you're feeling. And then trust your instincts. And when you get a feeling about someone, trust that. Even if you don't understand why. I, I blocked a couple of people. I, something wasn't right. So I blocked them. I, I wondered if I should unblock them and then I got from spirit, no, that person's a swinger. Don't go back there. No, leave it as it is. And it's interesting because I talked to my Uncle Phil and I said, look, this is what's going on and it's really bothering me and I told him. And I said, I, I don't know if I'm overreacting. And he said, no, you know what? If somebody wants to speak to you, Sherry, they can come and speak to you as themselves. If they're coming to you masked as someone else, they have issues they need, they need to work through. You don't have to make it easy for anybody. This is their challenge. It's not yours. Stay away from the drama. And if somebody would like to approach you in a respectful manner, allow that to happen. And I thought, I love you. See, sometimes we to talk to somebody that has intelligence <laughs> and we listen. So you'll know what's right for you. No matter what other people might think, think and feel. Maybe somebody thinks that the situation is not right for you, right? Because it's not right for them. But that doesn't mean it's not right for you. You may have all your friends say, that person's a freak. Man, I wouldn't go anywhere near that person. But you, that person connects to you. You feel whole there. You feel safe there. You feel at home there. So then why are you asking the other people how they feel? <laughs> they can't understand because they don't feel that. It's even like parents with kids, right? My mom and dad don't like my, my girlfriend. Well, how do you feel about her? I feel fantastic. She makes me feel really good about myself. You know, I feel really strong and I feel very connected. I feel very loved. I feel, uh, I lo my emotions are able to open up with them. I don't feel judged. I feel, I feel good. Well, then why are you allowing your parents to stop you? Well, because they're my parents. Mm, how old are you? Your parents don't have to live with her, right? Think about it. Your friends don't like your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your choice in, in uh, college or the job that you wish to pursue. I, I have a university degree, but I want to be a massage therapist. I've got healing hands and it relaxes me. And that work that I was doing was extremely stressful. Do it. You'll probably be fantastic at it. It's probably your life's calling. That's how you can heal the world and heal yourself at the same time. 
It doesn't matter that you have a college university degree and you were a lawyer. Who cares? Who needs that stress and negative energy? Oh my God, seriously? Take a Reiki course and put that into your massage therapy. That's what I do. Reiki massage, but I only do that for my, I will only do that for my, for my love. <laughs> Otherwise it's long distance Reiki. Hands on only with him. But it's, you want to talk about healing, man. A massage with Reiki healing going in. Oh, wow. And you both get the benefit of that. So if something feels right for you, go for it. If it doesn't feel right for you, don't. It's not for you. And at 50 minutes, we're at a wrap. Yay. I like this going out quick. I love it. Love you guys.